Clemson was really founded with materials in mind. It was founded in order to develop the materials resources of the state for the people of South Carolina and the nation. The current form of the department took shape in 2001 when we combined a textile department and a ceramic engineering department into what is now uh, material science and engineering. Our 20 tenure track faculty members educate over 200 undergraduate and graduate students and we're the leader for all the advanced materials initiatives that take place across campus. The nature of my research is to focus on the development of new glasses that get made into optical fibers and those optical fibers then get used in a wide variety of laser and communication systems. One of the things that differentiates Clemson's material science and engineering specifically with respect to fibers and lasers are the facilities that we have. What we do is we make optical fiber on an industrial scale. So as we want more information, as we want it faster, as we want it cheaper, that requires a next generation of fiber, which requires a next generation of glass, and that's what we develop. My research focuses on energy materials, and also I'm doing very exciting research that is 3D printing and laser processing. So we got the support from a DOE, that allow us to do a highly compacted electrolyzer stack for hydrogen production. My future plan for research is still focus on energy material and devices. We'll try to integrate laser processing and 3D printing. We'll try to make the energy device just out of the 3D printing stage. What my research group does is we focus on the synthesis of uh, biocompatible uh, magnetic nanomaterials. Specifically, we're interested in synthesizing um, iron oxide-based materials and other ferrite nanomaterials, and then using polymer chemistry to modify the surface of them to actually generate uh, the exact functionality that we want. Specifically, that includes items for antibacterial materials, MRI contrast agents, and also some environmental applications as well. Working with others is kind of where the fun is. You know, if I was just sitting in my office alone, I think I'd get pretty bored. And I think having the opportunity to collaboratively cross campus makes, you know, having this nice materials hub um, a unique opportunity for the department. In addition, we have state initiatives, uh, large state initiatives on education. So we have a $20 million National Science Foundation project that is called Made in SC for Made in South Carolina. And this project is really concerned with um, new types of uh, methods for developing materials as well as the assembly of materials and it has a significant focus on STEM and ultimately it aims to uh, enhance the, the economic prosperity of the state. The initiative has three thrusts focused on optoelectrical materials, biological materials, inorganic materials, and stimuli sensitive materials. All the projects actually have some overlap so there's not just pillars of different efforts. But the idea really is to make more smart materials. The materials I work on specifically are MEM resistors. And they're kind of a recent addition to the passive electronic devices, components that have been researched in the last few years. Uh, the reason being that they uh, can be used to do computational and memory all in the same place. And so they fall under the umbrella of artificial intelligence. I'm involved in the trust about multi-component materials and my major topic of research is how to connect different materials together. Most of modern materials, they are not contain just one type of substance, they contain multiple substances, and they typically don't like each other. And my job is them to be like each other and be strongly connected in material. In general, what we want to do, we want to add a tiny amount of uh, sort of designer polymer into something that is very common into um, basically so-called commodity polymers and uh, the specific properties that we are looking for are uh, wear resistance for example and very high oil of obesity the unique property of our system that uh, those additives are also non-toxic and environmentally friendly oftentimes when i'm meeting with students and they're asking about you know what the what are opportunities in material science and engineering i see now people don't have just one career you know, you have one career and then you pivot and you, then you pivot again. The curriculum in material science and engineering and what we prepare our students with it allows them to actually be very versatile and actually address the needs of many different fields. 
So I think this gives an excellent opportunity to my students to learn and uh, to learn actually from real world experience, from actually real examples. And uh, so we keep our feet on the ground with our simulations uh, by talking to our experimental collaborators. Yeah, I have already 35 years experience in material science engineering and I share it fully with my students and I want them to know more than I. I try to push them for that and I consider my graduate students be main product of my laboratories. Research is important, but students are more important. So at Clemson University, we're proud of our distinguished history and our exceptional future really lies in the hands of our students. And so our faculty are aimed at developing this next generation of students so that they can uh, go out in the world and, and make a difference.